The sixth grade, welcome to Wednesday. All right, today in reading, we are going to be doing a quick workshop on the story Names Slash Nombres by Julia Alvarez. All right, let's begin. So today we're focusing on what facts, opinions, and tone are in writing. Now we've talked about all of these a little bit in the past, especially tone, but it doesn't hurt to review. So, a fact is a piece of information that can be proven. It's pretty basic, pretty normal. Here's an example. Bananas have sweet flavor. This is a true fact that you can test out for yourself and isn't necessarily uh, disagreed with by lots of people. Okay, so an opinion then is a judgment or personal thought that can't be proven, but can be supported with facts. For instance, bananas are the best fruit. That's an opinion. Someone might disagree with me there. But I could point to this fact that supports why I believe bananas are the best fruit. Okay. Oh, there's a banana. All right. Um, tone. Now, tone is a little more complicated, and we talked about this maybe two, one or two weeks ago. Tone has to do with the word choice and point of view in an author's writing that shows us how they feel. You know, when you're talking to somebody, you can tell by their tone of voice how they feel. If it is quick and bubbly and loud and upbeat, you can probably say, all right, this person is happy. If it is loud or low or quick or snappy, you can tell, okay, this person's probably feeling angry. Tone is how we tell an author's emotions without hearing their voice. So we look at the words that they use and the point of view that they have on a subject to figure out how do they feel. Let's practice a little bit. Here's an example. I love bananas so much, they're extraordinary. You can tell by my tone of voice what the uh, tone probably is, but let's look at the words. I love, okay, those are some happy, good words. Bananas so much, okay, that shows us that this person is really enthusiastic about bananas. They are extraordinary. All right, this is sort of a happy, good word. So we could say that the tone here is, they have a happy tone. Usually we use emotion words to describe a tone of writing. So take a look at this sentence right here. There are no more bananas at high V. Ugh, are you kidding me? So what do you think the tone is for this sentence? No more is a group of words I'd like you to focus on. This exclamation point plus a question mark, the word ing me that phrase plus the exclamation point slash um, question mark. So tell me, what is the tone of this sentence? Okay, angry is probably the tone of the sentence. So we can tell that this person is not happy that there are no more bananas at Ivy. They say ugh right in the sentence. And then are you kidding me is not usually a happy. Fun fact. This combination of exclamation point and question mark actually has a name. It's called an interrobang. Okay, so let's move on. This story that we're going to read is an autobiography, which we talked about yesterday. So, an autobiography is a piece of nonfiction written about an author's own life. If you were going to write your life story, you'd be writing an autobiography. Remember the prefix auto means self. And biography is a word that means a piece of nonfiction about somebody's life. So add those together and you have a piece of nonfiction written about an author's own life. More specifically, this is an autobiographical sketch. Now, autobiographical, remember that is a huge word, but all it means is having to do with an autobiography. And a sketch is like a quick, quick little brief outline of something. So an autobiographical sketch is a shorter autobiography about the author's major life moments. It's not a whole book, it's just a few pages long. Okay, let's talk about the purpose, type, and form of this story as well. We talked about purpose, type, and form yesterday as well, and how to sort of split these three words into their own thing. So purpose has to do with what an author is trying to accomplish. And the purpose for this story is to inform slash describe uh, the life story of the author. 
The type of writing used in this is literary nonfiction. And literary nonfiction is, remember, it's, it's telling a story, but with lots of really expressive, beautiful language. It reads almost like a fictional book. And then the form of this uh, story, the final product, is an autobiography. And more specifically, an autobiographical sketch. All right, let's learn a little bit about Julia Alvarez. So she was born in 1950, and she was born in New York City. Uh, although she was born there, her family soon returned to their original home, the Dominican Republic. Julia's father worked to overthrow the dictator there. He and his family fled the country. Julia was 10 years old when they arrived in the United States again. From the moment she landed in New York City, she felt she had to translate her experience into English. Today she says, I write to find out what I'm thinking. So translate her experience into English. What does that mean? Well, she had to transition from being someone who lived in the Dominican Republic to someone who lived in the United States, which was a big change. And she had to translate kind of who she was and what her experience with life was so that it could work in the United States. And we'll learn more about that as we read her story. Okay, let's read through a little excerpt, which means a little slice of her story. My little sister, Anna, had the easiest time of all. She was plain Anne. That is, only her name was plain, for she turned out to be the pale blonde American beauty in the family. Later, during her college years in the late 60s, there was a push to pronounce third world names correctly. So if we look at that first sentence right there, my little sister Anna had the easiest time of all, we could say that Alvarez is stating an opinion right there. It cannot necessarily be proved, but she goes on to support it with details. All those details are following down uh, below here. So easy is sort of a relative term, which means that everybody has their own kind of definition for what makes something easy. So she, if she says that Anna had the easiest time, well, maybe people could disagree with her. Okay, let's move on. I remember calling her long distance at her group house and a roommate answering. I speak to a Anna, I asked, pronouncing her name the American way. Anna, the man's voice hesitated. Oh, you must mean Anna. Once again, let's look at this first sentence. In this sentence right here, the tone is kind of casual and relaxed. It sounds like Alvarez is just hanging out with us, the readers, telling a funny story. It's not necessarily happy or sad or mad, it's just kind of casual. She uses normal language that you hear every day. Okay. And our last little bit. Our first few years in the States, though, ethnicity was not yet in. Those were the blonde, blue-eyed, bobby sock years of junior high and high school before the 60s ushered in peasant blouses, hoop earrings, and serapes. My initial desire to be known by my correct Dominican name faded. I just wanted to be Judy and merge in with the Sallys and Janes in my class. Judy was the name uh, lived in the United States. So if we focus on this middle sentence here, where she lists all of these popular trends, we can see that she's stating some facts about what kinds of fashion were popular in the 1960s. Now, this isn't necessarily an opinion because lots of people really liked these different things like peasant glasses, hoop earrings, Sarah face. So we can say that it's a fact, not necessarily an opinion. All right, what we're gonna do for our workshop today Tomorrow we'll read the whole story and we'll talk more about facts and opinions and tones that we see in the story there. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.